Um, my name's Jonathan Strait. Um, I founded a business called Strait PLC 21 years ago, which became a market leader in waste and recycling container solutions. Um, I'm no longer with the business. I successfully sold the business to the Irish 151 group um, a few weeks ago. They have a stand here, it still bears my name. Um, but I should make it clear that I no longer have any uh, connection with the company um, in case uh, there's any confusion. Um, the business under my tenure was an environmental products and services uh, group with a focus on two key areas. One was waste and recycling containers, bins, caddies, this kind of thing. The other uh, was environmental garden products like compost bins uh, and water butts. Turnover of the group peaked at about 30 million a year. And the peak number of employees we had was uh, around about 150 at two sites. We had uh, an office in the center of Leeds. We had um, a factory latterly uh, in Hull. And I came to start the business having found myself between jobs. Um, I was looking for something that would not only earn me a living, but uh, something that would have tangible social or environmental uh, impacts as well. And in the late 1980s, I was researching the emerging environmental agenda when uh, I read something in a directory of uh, green issues. And I read this, that we pay to bury our waste in holes in the ground, um, and yet the material we bury has a value, uh, and so we end up paying for it twice. And I, I read it again. Um, this sentence basically set my agenda uh, for the next 25 years initially working as a volunteer for a small recycling consultancy. But I quickly saw where the opportunities were, um, and after working as a consultant for another plastics company uh, set up on my own uh, in 1993. So a brief uh, potted history of uh, Straight PLC, um, as I say, set up in 93 and floated on the London AIM market 10 years later. Um, and then doing a further fundraising two years after that to acquire our biggest competitor, uh, a company called Blackwall Limited. And both Strait and Blackwall um, had exported a little bit, mainly water butts and compost bins to the Irish Republic. Um, but export wasn't really given any great focus within the business until 2008. And then in 2009, we made another acquisition, Harkestar Garden Products. And Harkestar brought with it quite extensive European distribution and also Japanese distribution. And then finally, over the last couple of years, the business has vertically integrated. Um, and at the point I left, 75 to 80 percent of everything we were making was made in-house, whereas the previous model had outsourced all the production. And the outsource model is, uh, is worth mentioning, um, and I'll come back to it later, because for overseas activities, uh, it actually has, uh, has quite a useful purpose. So um, a look at some of the, um, some of the things that we made, uh, and indeed that the business, uh, the business continues to make. Um, the business is the market leader in, uh, in curbside recycling boxes. It's also market leader in uh, food waste caddies, both for indoors and outdoor use. Um, it has a position in the wheel bin market, um, typically 10 to 15% of the UK market. Um, you also notice the, uh, the inner caddy, which is a, quite an innovation which allows two waste streams to be collected in a single, in a single bin. This kind of thing for recycling in the workplace, um, where waste is separated into its constituent parts in offices, factories, schools, hospitals, uh, containers for hazardous handling, such as this one, which is uh, for batteries. Uh, a metal bin. Now, steely bin is quite an interesting product because it's not made in the UK. The metal parts are actually made in China. It's assembled in the UK, and uh, the lids are made in the UK, but the body um, and sometimes the welding is done in China. And what's interesting about Steely Bin is that actually it goes all over the world. And it doesn't always go all over the world from the UK. It sometimes goes, uh, goes out of China, sometimes goes as kits, it sometimes goes uh, assembled. Business has a major position in home composting. It's probably the biggest producer of home compost bins in the UK and a serious player 
uh, in water butts as well with, with an in-house blow molding facility. And uh, this is a slightly different take on the water butt, um, which was designed by uh, Wayne Hemingway, who rang several people and nobody would talk to him. We uh, were the fools who <laughs> listened and tooled up for it, got it listed in B&Q, and three days later, it was delisted due to the uh, huge number of complaints. It did feature on uh, the Jonathan Ross show at one time. Uh, <laughs> we didn't sell very many. Well, um, export, I think, at its height was only something like 6% of trade sales. Um, which in 2013 was about one and a half million pounds. Not an enormous sum of money, but um, exports were quite interesting, as you'll see. The ambition in the business was always to have export at 20% of sales, um, and that would have been a figure of about 10 million. And on the trajectory when I left, um, it would probably have taken us till about 2017 uh, to, achieve, uh, to achieve that. I don't know what ambitions the new owners have for export, but I can only imagine that they'll want to continue uh, the path we were on. The point is that exports were very profitable. The gross margin average um, in 2013, which was my last full year, was 12%, whereas the gross margin for exports actually turned out to be 20%, so it was much more profitable. Um, uh, uh, and if we look at why, it's probably because export is far more focused. Um, the kind of products you're going to export are the ones you're, you're most interested in, and the ones that are going to make you the most money are the ones with the biggest opportunity. Um, uh, uh, and I think it's, it's mix rather than anything else that makes export so profitable. Now, in the straight business, um, there are two routes to market for, um, for export. Um, and in all cases, we worked with local partners. And this is how the business is, evolved. We did look at having our own employees in place in certain countries where we were interested to develop things at more speed. But we never managed to justify the cost of doing this. Indeed, we went down the line of interviewing uh, people in certain countries. We never actually got that far. Mostly the sales are through distributors. Um, and we also have a number of agents, uh, mainly in Europe. The agents came with the acquisition of Harker Star and also with the later acquisition of Powell Plastics, which was our biggest manufacturing partner in 2010 as a vertical integration move. Powell Plastics also had some agency presence in Europe. Now, the thing about agents, um, particularly within the EU, is they have a lot of rights and if you don't want to work with the agent anymore, you have to buy them out of their contract. Um, fortunately for us, they're all doing a great job and it hasn't been necessary, but it's certainly something to keep in mind that if agents are the way you're going to go with exports, it brings with it a risk that the agent has rights not dissimilar to the rights that uh, an employee might have. In Australia and also in North America, the agents are supported by local, sorry, the distributors we have there, their distributors, are supported by relationships with local manufacturers. We commission the manufacturer of product in these countries and we supply the distributor or indeed the distributor's customer. And because as a business we have many more molds or we had many more molds than we needed, this was a very good way of sweating assets uh, that were otherwise underutilized. So how do you find the partner? Well, I've explained that um, some of these partners came with acquisitions when we bought Harker Star, when we bought uh, Power Plastics. We also found that it was very interesting to exhibit at international uh, trade shows, and that was a great way of recruiting partners. As I'll explain later on, you don't necessarily get what you're looking for, but it's a good way of putting yourself out there. And indeed, with one particular uh, exhibition in, uh, in America, we had extensive help from UKTI, which was very useful in terms of identifying potential partners before we got there and softening them up and, and sounding 
uh, sounding them out. And finally, the, um, the other way of finding partners is networking. And uh, we found that uh, things happen that you don't expect, but you'll meet somebody or hear about somebody or you'll find somebody who's extremely useful just by talking to people, uh, particularly in this kind of forum and international trade uh, exhibition. Now, if we look at the um, partners that we, re we recruited, um, they really fall into three groups. They might be businesses that complement our business. So, for example, EcoSafe, uh, one of our North American distributors, um, they have a business in compostable bin liners, and they sell our plastic caddies. So, complements the business perfectly. Or Sulo MGB in uh, Australia, who sell metal wheel bins that they buy from us. Their core business is plastic wheel bins, so that works very well. The second group are entrepreneurs, small specialist businesses with a very narrow focus. Both of our partners in Australia, Maze Distribution in the garden products market and Source Separation Systems, they fit in this, capa in this capacity. And the third are larger, more traditional businesses with a wide product base and a broad scope of activity. So all of the distributors we have uh, fit into one or other kind. So in Europe, um, the straight business has a, a small number of regional core distributors, garden and hardware in the countries you see, and EcoSort, which are office recycling containers and battery recycling containers, again, in a, in a range of countries. So in each country, we will have maybe one distributor. We might have two distributors, um, one for each market. We may have a master distributor and sub-distributors, really horses for courses, depending on what is happening where. And here you see how we exhibited uh, garden products, in Germany, uh, in Germany, we were working with uh, an agent, um, a long-standing agent of, uh, of the business. Um, and if you've seen the straight stand in the next hall, you'll see there's a big difference in how this is presented. It's much simpler. Um, it's much easier to transport. Um, it's the kind of thing that you can easily do in an overseas country at relatively low cost. Um, and when typically I was spending budgets of between 50 and 100,000 pounds on a trade show at the NEC, I would spend between five and 10,000 pounds on a trade show uh, in, uh, in, 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 uh, in Munich or in Cologne or wherever, uh, wherever these took place. In North America, um, there, are, there are two partners. Um, there's a specialist partner who looks after the municipal sector, and a number of contracts have been supplied so far. And there's two distributors in the garden market, one supplying other retailers and one supplying the dot-com industry. And we have some local manufacturer in Australia of caddies and uh, compost bins. And here you see how um, we presented um, with one of our distributors. This is the garden distributors. This is not our stand at all. Um, but has uh, straight products on it. And this is the uh, EcoSafe stand. Again, you see it's their branding, but using straight products. And branding is something really to keep in mind because by using distributors, it's very easy to lose control of your brand and to lose the ability to influence the brand. Certainly, um, I'm not delighted how these products are presented. Um, but again, it's under their brand. The straight brand doesn't exactly uh, figure. Australasia, again, um, a number of partners. Um, I mentioned that we had um, more than one distributor uh, in Australasia. And, uh, and again, here's a photograph showing one of those distributors um, and how they present uh, our products. They're also products from a number of different manufacturers uh, on this stand. So again, something that has to be kept in mind that a distributor, unless they're under a tight agreement, might well be free to trade with other com companies. And those companies may indeed be competitors 
uh, of the core business. So in this case, you can see there are the straight uh, EcoSort products in the front, but at the back there are Bush Systems containers from Canada, and Bush and Straight uh, are really competitors. This shows how Sulo have um, usurped the Steely Bin brand now. Uh, Unfortunately, it was impossible for Straight to copyright Steely Bin in Australia. And again, something to keep in mind that even if you want to register IP in overseas countries, it may not be possible. And the Australian um, authorities felt that Steely Bin was descriptive. They felt it wasn't particularly tied to a product that was on the market. And so they wouldn't stand for a trademark. So, of course, Sulo are perfectly at liberty to use it, as is anybody else. Um, who chooses to uh, in Australia. Um, indeed, we had an issue with the name Straight trying to copyright this or trademark it uh, in China. A little bit about the Middle East. Um, we have a lot of distributors in Israel. We've done quite a bit of business there. Um, Steely bin business in the United Arab Emirates where we've sent kits in for local assembly. So it's a matter of being flexible and um, tailoring the offer to what is required locally. Um, if somebody in the UK would have wanted a steely bin in a kit form, uh, I don't think that would have been entertained. But in order to supply the markets in the Emirates, that worked very, very nicely. And also in Japan, two garden distributors supplying retailers in the dot-com market. So that's really a picture of the global position as of the business at the point I left uh, just a few weeks ago. Well, um, I think if I can give one piece of advice uh, in terms of how to uh, develop uh, an export strategy, um, it will be to expect the unexpected. Indeed, that um, what you may set out to achieve may well not be achieved, but other things may be achieved uh, in their place. So for example, we discovered our opportunities in Australia at a trade show in America. The municipal activity in North America came about because of a chance conversation held in Sydney. The distribution of steel bins in the Middle East came about because of a chance conversation in Cologne. And Many of the shows that Straight did were not successful when they were judged against the criteria that were set out for them. But when they're judged uh, against broader expectations, they certainly worked. Um, it's very important to be open to um, things that come from left, left of field, and that really has worked extremely uh, well for us. Now, it's also important to understand uh, local markets and the competitive landscape. And we've understood in, at Strait under my tenure the competitive markets uh, and the macro environments in Australia and in North America. Um, and the relative lack of competition at the time that we chose to engage in the markets. And that hasn't been the case in some near markets. And indeed, um, we can have a word about uh, Italy uh, in, a, in a moment or two. This is quite interesting. Uh, thing to say about Italy. Um, it's important to maintain a presence. Um, but in my experience, these relationships, these distribution relationships, are built on trust and not on contracts. And I think um, the important thing is to be visible, be in regular contact, talk to your distributors, visit them frequently. Because if you don't, you'll create a vacuum, and your distributor, or indeed your competitor, will fill it. And the worst case will emerge, which is that your distributor then becomes your competitor. Now, I mentioned earlier that we, for 17 years, had worked on an outsourced business model. And it was only in the latter years of the business that uh, we began to make as a business our own products. And the outsource model was a very useful education. Um, and the fact that the business knows how to work with outsourcing has enabled it, once it gets things started, to manufacture locally in North America, to manufacture uh, locally in Australia. And I think finally, be pragmatic. Um, define your goals and um, focus on achieving them. 
don't be dogmatic about where things are made, about how things are branded, about how things look. Really be open to what the local market in the target countries um, want and really, um, in so far as possible, go with the flow. Now, of course, it's all about the partner, and you have to understand your partner very well. You have to understand what they can do. You have to understand what they can't do. And it's very important that all parties in the relationship have the same goals. Otherwise, uh, success won't come. And I would also um, avoid giving exclusivity to anybody. Uh, a dynamic and vibrant personal relationship should be mutually beneficial. And certainly in the early years of Strait, when Strait was a distributor for many foreign producers, there were no contracts in place, or if they were, they were relatively simple. It really was all about the relationship. Well, now let's just look at uh, what might go wrong. So. Appointing the distributor is really the very beginning of the, the exercise. The fact that you appoint a distributor in, in Japan, in China, in whatever country, doesn't mean that you've cracked the market. Indeed, often the opposite is true, because in appointing that distributor, you have limited your, action, your actions, you've possibly committed expenditure, and there is no guarantee of any return. It might not work. Um, you have to keep evaluating the achievement of the goals. It's very important. And if it doesn't work out, try something else. So understand the macro issues first, and then keep revisiting uh, these goals. So let's look at the garden distributor Strait had in North America. It cherry-picked the range. It cherry-picked the bits it wanted, and it filled in with its own stuff. And now the partner is also a competitor because the business is excluded on the basis they're the distributor. Um, minimize business issues. It's very important to have a tight, tight control over quality, particularly. Debt problems, payment problems are magnified a hundredfold when they're thousands of miles away. And it's very important to be proactive uh, in so far as possible. And cash, as far as the straight business, uh, is concerned was always the really big problem. Um, it's hard to fund exports. There are schemes, there are systems. I'm sure UKTI can help. But for me, this was always difficult. And if Strait would have had access to more money, it could have done a lot more exporting under my tenure. Now, we come back to Italy um, to conclude. And not understanding the macro issues in the Italian market meant that in 2010, this, which was an adventure in Rimini, was a complete flop. And our strapline, the art of recycling, we had translated into Italian. Uh, as you see, um, we published literature in Italian. And we thought that because Italian councils use similar products to the ones we made, that was sufficient for us to break the market. We failed to take on board two things. One is that Italians buy from Italians, and two, that they don't pay their bills in municipal circles for many, many months. So whilst we failed to do any business in Italy, actually we did get a Spanish distributor out of it, and they've done quite well for us, so not a total waste of time. And of course, while we were there, the food was pretty good. So looking ahead. Um, I spent four years laying the platform. 10% of turnover certainly was achievable, but 10 to 20% would have required uh, a step change in the business. Um, BRIC countries, more in Japan, enhancing our management, um, formalizing channel arrangements, uh, this kind of thing. The fact I've exited the business now leaves the stage clear for the new owners to hopefully continue this work. Um, and really, that is the story of what we did in Straight PLC.